So the Scarecrow finally returns, and this time it's in a miniseries all its own. Well, he's the main villain in it. As usual with Scarecrow Tales, the story isn't really about him. Anyway, Kings of Fear, a six issue miniseries that just recently wrapped up, was written by Scott Peterson and penciled by classic 90s Batman artist Kelly Jones. In the story, Batman delivers the Joker to Arkham, only to be faced with a massive breakout. He easily defeats all the escaped inmates, except for one, who managed to slip out during all the fighting. The Scarecrow. Crane took an Arkham staff member with him as a hostage. Naturally, Batman sets out to get Johnny back and save the hostage, but is immediately subjected to fear gas. It's a more potent gas than before, and Batman soon begins to see the Scarecrow stalking him wherever he goes. Is it the real Crane or just an apparition? Regardless, instead of fighting Batman, the Scarecrow offers his psychological aid. He insists that Batman opens up to him and reveals his greatest fears. Crane wants to help Batman face and admit these fears, and together reach a breakthrough. Obviously, this doesn't sound like something the Dark Knight would agree to, but he's got little choice, as Scarecrow does have a hostage. Thus, it's a crazy therapy session with Batman and Dr. Jonathan Crane. So like I said, this story doesn't really explore the character of the Scarecrow. Once again, all Johnny Crane is used as a plot device to explore the hero. The character seems to be cursed to this. When I heard about this miniseries, I got really excited. First off, it's very rare that we get some kind of miniseries or one-shot special that doesn't feature Joker as the main villain. As I've repeated ad nauseum, the Joker is severely overused and whenever something special is made with Batman, it seems that he has to appear in it. That is kinda what happens here too. The story opens up with Joker and out of all the Arkham escapees, he's the only one to get special treatment. The rest are just extras with barely any dialogue. Not that they should have been anything else in this story, it's a scarecrow story after all, but then so shouldn't really the Joker either. I find it kind of funny that even when this writer decided he'd do a Scarecrow story instead of a Joker one, he still couldn't stop himself from putting the Joker in it. Anyway, I'm not really as bothered by Joker's presence as it might seem, I just thought I'd mention it. The second reason I got excited for Kings of Fear was because, as we all know, the Scarecrow has few really great stories. He's a great character, but not many seem to know what to do with him. Either he's uninteresting, too goofy, too weak, or just used as a plot device. I figured this could finally be that great Scarecrow story I've been waiting for for so long. Perhaps the greatest. It is only the second time Crane gets an entire series dedicated to himself after all, the other one being Scarecrow Year One. I at least can't remember any others. But yeah, I guess I ended up a bit disappointed. It's not the greatest Scarecrow story ever told, and it's not even really a Scarecrow story at all. Like I said, it's a story about Batman. In a nutshell, it explores the idea of a Gotham City without Batman. What effects has the Batman really had on Gotham? And in what ways would the city be different if Bruce Wayne had simply been Bruce Wayne and not the Dark Knight? This story being so new and many of you not even having read it yet, I will not reveal what conclusion it lands on. I will say though that Bruce Wayne's biggest fear is that Batman has had a negative effect on the city. This is what Crane helps him realize, or rather admit to himself. Bruce fears that he's wasted his life on Batman a meaningless cause fighting a pointless battle with no end, only inspiring more madness even, when all along he could actually have made a real difference simply as Bruce Wayne. It's an interesting question, one I've considered myself many times. Putting on a bat costume and kicking muggers in the face is pretty stupid after all. What real change does that make? I don't buy into the silly idea that violence breeds more violence, I'm just saying that you need to think a lot bigger. As Bruce Wayne, he could use his massive fortune to make Gotham a better place. If Commissioner Loeb was being bribed by Carmine Falcone, well then Wayne, who's much richer than Falcone, could simply have out-bribed him, buying the entire police department. He could even appoint his own commissioner and even mayor. He could have everyone in his pocket. Sure, it's breaking the law, but so is being Batman. He could finance the city through legal means anyways. Of course, he does do that to some extent, but let's be honest here, he burns way more money on cool gadgets and vehicles for Batman. Simply put, being Batman isn't very realistic. It wouldn't work in the real world. But then again, this isn't the real world, it's a comic. It's an adventure comic about a masked crime fighter. Asking the kinds of questions that this story does is, in a way, pretty unnecessary. You're not really supposed to look at Batman realistically, like with all superheroes. But I have to admit, it can be pretty interesting to do sometimes, albeit kinda pointless. 
So regardless of the fact that Kings of Fear isn't about Scarecrow, what's he actually like in the comic? I have to say he's pretty great. This is definitely one of the best characterizations we've ever gotten of Crane. A lot of stories in all forms of media have a hard time pulling that off. Often he's portrayed as a goofy boogeyman, constantly proclaiming how he's the master of fear. Or there's too much focus on him as a bullied geek looking for petty revenge. Crane is also often depicted as a simple thief with a gimmick. I guess he's a pretty difficult character to nail down. Maybe because he wasn't really all that good in his first appearance. Ever since, writers have been looking for ways to make him more interesting. But when the foundation isn't quite solid, that can be troublesome. Peterson manages though, as he's decided to focus on Crane's background in psychology. This is basically a psychiatrist version of the Scarecrow, one who's obsessed with cracking the mysteries of the mind. And what mind is more mysterious than the Batman's? Obviously they're also arch enemies, so naturally Batman would be a prime target. The funny thing is though, Scarecrow isn't really looking to hurt Batman, he actually wants to help him, in his own twisted way of course. This is something we've never really seen before. Scarecrow's relationship with Batman is usually pretty different. Batman is either his only fear or considered to be a mere nuisance, getting in the way of his schemes. Here Batman is the scheme, but not really in the same way as Joker or the Riddler were treated. He's not trying to outwit Batman or dance some never-ending death waltz. He wants to cure him of his fears. If anything, Scarecrow would normally wish to drown Batman in his fears. Needless to say, this was a very fresh take on the Prince of Panic, even though I still wouldn't say the story does anything truly revolutionary with the character. By the way, this has gotta be the Scarecrow's most impressive feat. He's gotten to Batman many times in the past, sure, but he's never gotten to him this bad before, even making him seriously doubt his entire crusade. So now that I've read it, would I put Kings of Fear in my top 5 Scarecrow stories? I'm thinking probably, either as my number 5 or 4. So yeah, we didn't get the definitive Scarecrow story unfortunately, but we did get a pretty great one nevertheless. The only real legitimate complaint I have with this comic is some of the dialogue. Several times Batman runs into someone, a doctor at Arkham or even a complete stranger, and they're just way too chatty. They deliver entire speeches to Bats even though they just met him. It's very unnatural and nobody would talk like that in real life. Of course Peterson is trying to make his point through this dialogue, but there must have been better ways to do that. Just look at some of these word balloons, would Batman even stick around for all of that? I mean considering the fact he always bails out on his pal Jim Gordon before he can even finish two words. That even happens once in this very story. Anyway, it's not a deal breaker or anything, but it was a bit distracting. As for the art, it's classic Kelly Jones, and you can't get any better than that. I think he's actually as good as he used to be too. Of course this art style isn't for everyone, a lot of people even hate it. I'll admit that some of his panels look bad. That's how it's always been with Jones. One page is fantastic, the other an amateurish mess. But for me, the good vastly outweighs the bad. I've always loved his monster-like Batman, with the giant ears, the never-ending cape and the bony clawed fingers. Jones' Batman reminds me of some sort of vampire creature, and that in my book is a win. It's not realistic, no, but realistic Batman art tends to be boring in my opinion. Jones's Scarecrow here actually sports a somewhat new design. It's not the same one he used back in the 90s. The most notable difference is this one has a more skull-like mask. I like both versions and honestly can't decide which one I prefer. I would say that his Joker has greatly improved. The Clown Prince was always a character Jones seemed to have trouble with. He never really looked quite the same twice, within the same story. Here his look is pretty consistent and the overall design is superior to the old one. By the way, it's so great to see a very colorful clownish looking Joker in a modern comic book. So there you have it, my review of the recent Kings of Fear miniseries. Most people seem to really love this one, and I do like it quite a bit too, but wouldn't really call it one of my favorites. It does, probably, land in my top 5 Scarecrow tales though, and if you're a fan of old Johnny Crane then you definitely need to check it out. If you've read it already then let me know in the comments what you thought. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.